What's that? This is the top ten albums everyone should own. <gasps> well, this is my top ten albums that everyone should own. It's the top 20 albums everyone should own. Welcome back to Spin and Prague, everyone. Um, we have a lot of new people here, so hello to you all. And thank you for all the love on our last video with Very John. Good. Yep. Yeah, we're delighted yep. and so happy you all loved coming around Cork with us. And mm coming on our little adventure so that was fun a lot of positive feedback on the channel a lot of new subscribers and everything so uh, we're delighted with how things are going yeah. uh, so today's video is uh, I sat down and I made a list of what I thought the top 10 albums everyone should own would be based on what we have in our own collection mm. Okay, Tara did a list <laughs> Of the top 10 albums everyone should know, based on our collection. So we got together, put the two lists together, uh, where we were, where we had uh, two the same, we took them out and replaced them with another one. So we've actually got the top 20 albums everyone should own, based on what we own ourselves. Yeah, and there, there's one from each band. Uh, we don't cross over at any stage, so we have a big uh, collection here now of various artists mm. to show, and yeah. Yeah. Please don't kill us. <laughs> no, don't kill us. This is just our opinions, okay? Yeah. And um, basically we're thinking of people that might have a, a collection of uh, vinyl, they might have a collection of CDs, they're into rock music, and we're kind of thinking what would be... Uh, some stable pillars of that collection for somebody and we might have some new ideas for someone or you might have some suggestions you might want to give us back mm. but anyway we're going to kick off uh, I'm going to go first surprise surprise yes, off yes, yes okay so I am going to start with something completely obvious that everybody should have in their collection which is Dark Side of the Moon by Pink Floyd there are times, there's something about this album, it's almost like an album that's in a genre of its own. Yeah, yeah. Um, there are times when it comes on and it creates a mood like no other album can. Mm. Uh, it's wonderful late in the evening, cranking up the old stereo, sitting back, relaxing, you've just finished up whatever you're doing for the day, put it on. Sit down, let it take you off and contemplate life and the meaning of everything. I think it's absolutely fantastic. Every every home should have one. Yeah. Dark Side of the Moon. Yeah. Pink Floyd. And they probably do. Uh, they probably do. Stage. Yeah, and you probably <laughs> have it anyway, but hey, I'm just reinforcing your purchasing decision. <laughs> Mine is definitely a little bit out there, but I have chosen Still Life Ooh, by Matt oh, <laughs> Um, this was my first proper album to own by Van der Graaff Generator and I don't think it's totally like mad like some of their other stuff and dark. There's a lot of very nice moments in it and uh, you know there's going to be a lot of moments in it where you're like wow oh my god that's brilliant and you're not going to be scared. <laughs> um, when I first heard it I thought it was absolutely like mind blowing. And I really do genuinely think if you do not have this, please check it out because you will like it. Absolutely. Mm. No, it is a great album and Peter Hammond's voice is left very untreated on it, isn't yeah. it? Which is which is quite good, you know. So I'm going to stay with the pretty obvious things at the moment actually. And I'm gonna go with Led Zeppelin four. I think everybody needs a Led Zeppelin album. Oh yeah. Oh, yeah. And um, Led Zeppelin 4 is just great, it's just one of those albums, uh, you can rock it up with it, you can kind of sit back and relax, it's, you know, you've got Stereo to Heaven, Black Dog, you know, Misty Mountain Hop, all sorts of things on this, that when the levy breaks at the end and everything, so it, uh, it, it basically covers an awful lot of moods and mm. everything. Mm -hmm. uh, but a fantastic album and well worth having in anyone's collection. Mm -hmm. And my one is The Magician's Birthday by Uriah Heep. Um, definitely going to be one where people are like, what? But 
I mean, it's it's rock and roll. It's proggy. It's got poetry in it. Like it's it's got a battle in it. It's brilliant. Um, you know, it, they have a lot of good albums, especially in this era. But this one would be my favorite. Um, and not just for the the artwork, the Roger Dean artwork, but the album itself is it's just really good. There's some great uh, musicianship on it. The lyrics on it are absolutely gorgeous. Just definitely one that I feel like you would need in your collection. Yeah, yes, like kind of descending into a kind of uh, fantasy story or whatever. Yeah. It? Yeah. Okay. My next one, obvious again, is going to be, I suppose, from one of the nicest covers in the collection to one of the worst covers. <laughs> I like that cover. Do you? Yeah, I used to have a pair of shoes with that on it. Never. Did you? Yeah. <laughs> Jeez, I don't remember them, but, <laughs> but Black Sabbath's Paranoid. Um, uh, you know, I used to meet young guys and they'd be trying to talk to me about some heavy music they were listening to. And I'd always say, go on off and listen to Paranoid. And they'd come back and go, oh my God. <laughs> You know, what they, because it's the touchstone. It's yeah, just, it it's is, just yeah. the touchstone. And at times you want some kind of heavy thing, like and something that isn't. I suppose the two albums I've picked up to now, they're not really, they're not really dark. Although Dark Side of the Moon has its moments, but uh, they don't really hate you. But like, Jesus, like. yeah, yeah. But this is kind of what's wrong with the world, kind yeah. of thing, and what's wrong with people. And th it's interesting that the problems that they're talking about Vietnam and. You know, uh, opioid addiction and all sorts of things like that. So are still with us today. So uh, unfortunately, yeah. so still a very poignant album, fantastic album, fantastic. So yeah, I would highly recommend everybody who wants a copy of that. Absolutely. Now, my next one is the Who's second rock opera. This was after Tommy mm -hmm. and. I didn't choose Tommy because I feel like this one hits a lot harder. Uh, there's a lot of very kind of rock and roll parts to it. And a lot of very kind of emotional parts as well, which there is in Tommy too. But when I was trying to think of the two, oh, which one do I go for? Quadrophenia just bet it by a little bit because it's so powerful. Um, the first time I ever heard it, I cried. <laughs> <laughs> so probably not very surprising but uh, yeah I just if you haven't got this one definitely grab yourself a copy because it's from start to finish absolutely fantastic and so cool as well you're going to be listening to the songs and thinking oh wow that's absolutely brilliant so yeah yeah, yeah, it's a fantabu uh, fantabulous experience. Oh, well, 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 must be the excitement of all the records. But, uh, but yeah, it's it's really a fantastic. Experience. It's like reading a book. Yeah, actually, yeah, listening to that record. So, I mean, we're we're continuing on our journey. So, as we said, these are kind of what we think might be the pillars of a very healthy record collection. My next one, I'm going from the dark side to the light, close to the edge. But yes. Uh, we have to pick a Yes album, and if you're going to pick any Yes album, uh, Close to the Edge is an absolutely fantastic like. album. I'm not saying it's their best album with me. Their best album kind of varies from day to day, mm. depending on what way I feel, but uh, it's a consistently good album. It's a wonderful album. Like Whereas, you know, when we think about Quadrophenia, it's like a book that takes you off into this kind of place and this time and everything like that. Uh, some of the other things that we talked about, Dark Side of the Moon, bring you off on a kind of a journey and things like this. Uh, the Magician's Birthday into this fantasy thing. This brings you into some sort of kind of ethereal realm, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. It's almost like this kind of uh, zen state or whatever. Fantastic album. The musicianship on it, the composition, everything. It just, it just can't be fault, uh, faulted. Okay? Yeah. So close to the edge. Next one. Yeah. Now, my next one is like foundational rock and roll kind of in my head this is how I, I did my list it was kind of things that that made me that got me into the music I'm into today so cream wheels of fire I went for this one because it's real rock and roll you know you've got white room opening up this album and all the other tunes are just absolutely like oh perfect um yeah, and I mean, I, I'm really into the kind of 
rock and roll side. I know they kind of call them grey area prog as well, like cream mm. and all them. But I think uh, you need to have some of this in your collection to kind of balance it out. Like you can't just have all mad prog, prog albums. You have to have some of this in there as well. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's got the live side, uh, the live album mixed with the other one. So you get the two kind of sides of the band. And uh, yeah, I think Cream kind of elevated musicianship in music up to a level yeah. that allowed the gates to open mm. for the prog artists that we all, that we all know and love. Okay. So where am I going to go next, Tara? That's going to be the question. Um, so I'm going to go off into the kind of whimsical Englishness that, that is kind of part of Prague and everything like that. And we go off to where Ian Anderson, his uh, girlfriend or wife at the time, was doing some photo photographic record of uh, homeless people and everything. And uh, he got an idea for an album and along came Aqualong. Uh, which is a fantastic album. It's uh, very, you know, uh, I'm just a simple man with my half a bit of bread and jam. <laughs> you know, if you don't like it, I'll put one on you, man. You know, <laughs> so uh, a very kind of um, Englishness about it. It's uh, fantastic, but it also is a rocking album at times. And it, it can, you know, I mean, you get a song that's featuring like one of the heaviest riffs, like in Aqualung itself. Yeah. And then it's followed up with a song that features a uh, recorder yeah. playing the riff. Uh, a fantastic album, great. Uh, each side has its own personality. Mm. And uh, it's well worth having in anybody's record collection. It's just a fantastic piece of music. Yeah. So Aqualung by Jethro Tull. And carrying on from my last one, uh, some more quintessential rock, Deep Purple in Rock. Yeah. I have to have this one. Um, this is where I was introduced to the mixture of heavy guitar and drums with Hammond Arden. Oh my god, yeah, like, yeah. absolutely amazing. Uh, my god, Richie Blackmore and John Lord, uh, Ian Gillen's voice. Oh. Lord Jesus, like I just everyone needs to have this in their collection. So so rock and roll. Mm. Plus, you have a big mixture of kind of blues, rock and roll, being played yeah. like, uh, you know, I mean, I remember an interview with uh, I think it was Roger Glover, and he said they didn't think they were playing right until the needles were hitting the <laughs> stop in the studio. Yeah. So like, I mean, it's fantastic. So it's being played at that level, but there's also the kind of European classical music element in there as well mm. which kind of really makes that album it's a fantastic album okay so uh the next one of kind of i suppose the mainstream of prog is where i'm kind of sitting in at the moment now or you have a few quirky little choices to come although tara opened with some quirky choices and she's probably going to stay going with some quirky choices no and or it's always quirky okay so my next one is larks tongues and ass well and that isn't quirky <laughs> it's it's brilliant. It's brilliant. Every home should have one. It's fantastic. It's great. Again, this is an album almost in its own genre. Yeah. There's nothing like this. This again, it, it's cinematic. It's it's a wonderful experience. Uh, it takes listening to. You yeah, know, yeah. you need to sit down and listen to this. Somebody said to me one day. They said, you know, when you're in a record shop and they have uh, a section called easy listening. They said. Uh, looking at your record collection, Dermot, it should all be down as difficult listening. <laughs> you know? so, so this is kind of one that takes a bit of listening, it takes a bit of time, takes a bit of digestion to get into, but it's well worth hanging in there with it. So Lark's Tongues and Aspic, uh, mm -hmm. definite one. Yes, get it, you mm -hmm. know. Definitely. And my next one is actually quite mainstream when it comes to mm -hmm. prog. Foxtrot by Genesis, of course, features the absolutely incredible Suppers Ready, uh, something that everybody should have in their collection. Watcher uh, of the Skies. Watcher of the Skies. That beat a bit of Melatron. No, then. like, I mean, <laughs> this is just absolute, like, epitome of early Genesis. Uh, Peter Gabriel's lyrics, all the guys playing, you know, you've got Steve Hackett on this one, and I, I'm very biased because I just love Steve Hackett, I think he's amazing, and I love Peter Gabriel. And Tony but, uh, Banks. Tony Banks, Mike Rutherford, Phil Collins, <laughs> love them all, but yeah, this is, uh, 
this is something that would definitely be like the foundations of a healthy Prague record collection and I'd say most of you have it already but if you don't hmm. you gotta get it yeah 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 okay so uh yeah it was funny where we clashed in like we kind of came out with some interesting bits like so uh but uh you need something a bit slick yes in a record collection as well something that's really you know that you could put on nice evening you might be preparing a bit of lunch or, or a bit of lunch bit of dinner or whatever a glass of wine you're relaxing um steely dan asia just such a fantastic album like you know it's just so slick is the only word i can use to describe it it's just so well put together yeah. it's a fantastic piece of work um and it just carries itself you know you you, you could put it on go about doing a few things in it and now and again they'll just go what <laughs> what and you'll hear something in it that's yeah, just yeah. so fantastic it could be just the, the raising of a hi-hat or a touch of a cymbal or just you can almost see somebody up strumming the guitar in a certain section and it just hits or a little bass uh, feature somewhere mm. absolutely astounding that's and the production quality on it is the best yeah, I've ever just, heard in it's my life. just a fabulous it's album amazing yeah 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 so Asia by Steely Dan very, very, sophisticated. Mm. very sophisticated. Now, this one is one of my first ever albums. I bought Script for a Jester's Tear by Marillion. And this is where I was introduced to kind of the mixture of poetry into lyricism by Fish, um, which had a very uh, pivotal effect on my life. Is that a good or bad thing? Who knows? <laughs> <laughs> it had a pivotal effect on mine too, I have to say. So, so maybe that explains what's wrong with us. But <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and I was introduced to the Mar the Mark Wilkinson art, and I, my God, I couldn't, couldn't even fathom like his art. It's just fantastic, and being able to hold it and look at it while listening to the record is just adds to the absolutely fantastic mm. experience of this album. Mm. So, yeah, this is kind of quintessential Marillion, and I think it needs to be a part of everyone's collection. Yeah, no, no, it's a fabulous album, and, you know, lyrically great, and if you, you know, I mean, most of us get our hearts broken when we're a teenager, and uh, I've never heard a better album. Not when of. we're a teenager, our whole life. <laughs> no, no, don't worry, Tara, it stops in the end. In the end, it grows a hard crust <laughs> that can't be broken anymore, trust me. <laughs> that was completely off script sorry uh, uh, but uh, but yeah 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 brilliant uh, and thanks for bringing up covers too because uh, to change the subject speaking of covers uh, we've got uh, Sail and Shoes here by Little Feet oh, I love that cover so I, I don't know what it was about <laughs> about uh, about albums and things and we were talking about them and I just thought I wanted something to uh, I suppose very early on when I remember listening to albums, I used to, uh, my brother got a lend of a lot of kind of Neil Young and Bob Dylan things from the 70s, you know. Mm. And there was this kind of feeling of travelling in America mm. was this thing that came across with these things. You know, you hear about state, different states and different places and things. And uh, I just, I think this album is just one of the best things to draw a kind of big panoramic picture of the US. There's just so many different in American influences on it. Yeah. That it, it's it's fantastic and it's just a beautiful, beautiful piece to listen to. And when I um, I remember the album being out when I was quite young, and then uh, it, uh, you know, I hadn't seen it for years, and then I bought this coffee copy, and when I put it on, I couldn't believe it because about half the songs I could sing along with. I don't know oh, yeah, where I that came from. Yeah, that yeah. Too, yeah, yeah. So absolutely fantastic album. Uh, Little Feet, Sail and Shoes. Yeah. Weird pick as well. I like that. Yeah, you see, now that's where I'm coming in. Now, you see, from the gang of seven to <laughs> the end. Go on, Tara. Blowing My... into false sense of security. Go on. This yeah. is definitely a part of most people's prom collection, I'd say. Tarkus by ELP. Uh, I struggled to pick brain salad surgery or this one but in the end I landed on this one because 
the way it affected me when I first listened to it. I mean, I don't think my jaw has ever hit the floor that hard before. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, I mean, this is probably one of the most amazing albums I've ever heard in my life. And everyone needs to hear it. Like, I mean, what, what do you even say? Jesus Christ, like, it's so powerful. Mm. The musicianship on it is just way, way on another level. Um, even I love the little pictures you can look at while the Tarkus is going on his little killing spree, like you know. <laughs> yeah, yeah, his little killing spree. She says it so nonchalantly, yeah. doesn't she? <laughs> but uh, yeah, I mean, Jesus, what an album! Um, yeah, everyone needs to have this. Like, well, if you've never heard it as well. You got yeah. to go and just listen to even just the Tarkus suite. Like, oh my God! Well, that's it. Side one of it is very strong. So it too takes a bit of a bit of getting into, but there's a few great moments like bitches, crystals, there is, yeah, and things yeah. like that, yeah, yeah, yeah. And it does, it is worth uh, kind of uh, spending the time getting into side two. Because I've mm -hmm. heard a lot of people who said, "Oh, I like side one, but I can't get into side." There is some great moments. It's hard on side two, after so. you've listened to side one. I think you need to go and have a cold shower <laughs> and then put on <laughs> side two, and then you'd be okay. <laughs> <laughs> That's it, Jack. Uh, come down a bit before you put it on. Okay, now I think any collection deserves some sort of electronic, and I kind of struggled as to what to put on it, but in the end, I chose Oxygen uh, by Jean Michel Jarre or Jarre or however his name is pronounced. Uh, I just think it's a wonderful album. Oh, it is. Uh, it's yeah. uh, very. Um, uh, you know, it, it's how can I put it? It's 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 very floaty. Uh, uh, you know, it just it takes its time. It uh, brings you into it. I tend to put a lot of this stuff on when I'm working. Yeah. So I, I do a lot of kind of working on a laptop and typing and things when I'm working, and I um, I, I would find something like this really re relaxing to have on in the background. That's what I tend to do with this stuff. But, but as well as that, it's not all I do. Sometimes I'd sit down and I'd just say, I, I want a piece of electronica. And I kind of reach for him a lot. Mm. And I think this is an absolutely stunning album to bring out as your debut album. Which is just yeah, it's very brave. Yeah, brave yeah, yeah. So, uh, Oxygen uh, is my next choice. My next one is definitely a little bit weird again, but... Oh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> flying Teapot by Gone. Uh, you know, I've spoke about it in previous videos and said I heard it when I was a kid for the first time and it brought me off into this like mad imagination, imaginary world and um, as I get older I appreciate it more because it's, it's, it's such a good story, the musicianship on it is amazing, uh, Dave Allen and Jilly Smith are wow, like... <laughs> I'm struggling here, but uh, yeah, I just, you know, like you open this up and look at it and, you know, you're immediately drawn to it when you look at it. When you put it on, then it's like, ooh, what's happening? So yeah, I think everyone needs to check this one out because it's absolutely fantastic. Yeah, it's a strange, whimsical adventure, isn't it's it? It's so good. I, I love the way that so you bring good. storytelling into the things too, yeah, because, because some of these things like have different flavours, like different types of a story. Yeah, they? but you see, I was introduced to all this music when I was a kid through you, like, and, okay. and the storytelling and everything had a profound effect on me as a kid. Okay. And it kind of, you know, I'd apply these little different stories to different parts of my life and it would help me through certain situations and all that. So it's it's had a huge effect on my life. Okay. And that's why I love to talk about all the storytelling. Okay, cool, cool. Okay, uh, my next one is one that, uh, a band that I've only got into quite recently um, because I can remember them when they were going through they're awful <laughs> times and I remember when I was I was probably about 11 or 12 and my brother was playing some music upstairs one day and I could hear this fantastic guitar song and I said, I said what's that, what's that, it's fantastic and uh, he said uh, that's Chicago <laughs> what? Uh, but I never knew what albums to buy I yeah. mean you know uh, thank God for the internet you know if you're young enough that you don't remember life before it 
uh, you wouldn't know which ones to buy. Like, and you could go in and buy something horrendous, you know. <laughs> <laughs> go home with this awful uh, love balance going through your head on now. But I particularly like this one, colloquially known as Chicago 7. Oh, uh, I <laughs> believe that they don't really have titles for these <laughs> albums, actually. Uh, but this, this is amazing because what this album has is, the t is two kind of extreme sides of the same band, you know. Uh, it, you know, a lot of people would say, oh, pick the first one, or maybe the second one I see now is getting the uh, Stephen Wilson treatment to it. Uh, the first one is a kind of a thing in itself. It's, yeah. it's a kind of, it's, it's obviously based on a fantastic live show that they have. The second one is a little bit light yeah. and a bit 60-ish, 60s-ish for my liking. Uh, to me, Chicago 3 is absolutely astounding but a lot of people talk about this as their kind of fusion album and it's when they kind of uh, kind of polarize people a little bit i i don't really hear that in it mm. i hear them actually uh, you know to me this sounds very similar to something like chicago 3 but it's uh, it's actually uh, opened it out a lot more uh, so there are some nice songs and things on it but there's also some amazing amazing uh, instrumental music on this that takes in all sorts of different influences and everything so Chicago 7 is my final choice oh god it's going to be hard to uh, come up to that she one now that. No, she'll never do it she'll never do it never <laughs> oh, no 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 oh my god rainbow rising um I'd say a few people are going to be looking at this now and going, where's all the prog, guys? Uh, it is prog, it's all bloody yeah, prog. But yeah, but there's a lot of people would say that this isn't prog, like, and that it's, it's the, There's, more, the, it's there's the, the template for prog metal. Yeah, absolutely. If, uh, yeah. if that album didn't exist, I don't think Dream Theater would have a, a structure to create an album. Oh, that's a... There's a statement now. Jesus, Take me up I'm not looking forward to it. <laughs> 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 all you Dream Theater fans... A huge Dream Theatre fan, by the way, don't get me wrong. But uh, I can hear the influence of that album in a lot of their work. Absolutely. Sure, they did uh, cover a Stargazer and all oh, that. Right, yeah, yeah. But yeah, this is known for Stargazer, which is probably... I mean, you could I could listen to that every day and never get sick of it. It's absolutely amazing. And this was my introduction to Ronnie James Dio, rest in peace. You absolute legend. Um... Dio, won't you help me? Yeah, I'm lost and so long. <laughs> Only got up the other day and mortified myself singing that. But anyway, um, yeah, I mean, this is absolutely quintessential rock and roll. I know I've said that word a billion times in this video, but we are talking about like quintessential albums for a collection. And I think this is definitely one of them. Uh, you know, this is just life-changing <laughs> yeah, honest to god like it really album. is yeah. and uh yeah if you've never heard it just go go and listen to it right now mm. okay mm. so there we go okay so there are 20 albums that we feel that any respectable uh record collection should have do you know what <laughs> Uh -oh. We forgot how awkward. I, you know, I didn't forget them. I was going to put them in, but I wanted. And, and we forgot. I'm thinking of it now for for volume two. <laughs> like already. Of course, like there's going to be another video, isn't there? I was going to pick Awkward, but I don't have Warrior on the Edge of Time, and I wanted to put that in it so bad, but I couldn't. Another one. We were picking so them out of the collection. No, but I, that's the one. Quark, Strangeness and Charm. I know, but Warrior on the Edge of Time, that's the one <sighs> that I can just listen to constantly. In I search think it's of space. Fantastic. Yeah, they're all brilliant, <laughs> but that is the one. That's the one, like... Yeah, but anyway, it's off from the video and gone forever. But uh, yeah, yeah, so please give us your uh, top 20 or whatever suggestions that you might have to add to ours or how you feel about what we've presented. Please feel free to uh, join us and uh, converse with us in the comments. Mm. We'd love it. If you haven't already subscribed, please subscribe. Please like the video. Share it with anyone that you know that likes this sort of thing. And uh, we'll see you in the next one. Bye. Bye.